Hey, what's up, Briefers? This is a long overdue video. I have been wanting to share my personal experience with keeping SPS corals in the 135 gallon system now that I've done it for a little bit, and how I would have suggested myself from years ago on keeping SPS. There are many ways to do things, and these are just my humble opinions, but thinking back, these are what I wish I would have known when I was starting out in the SPS journey. So I'll break this down into three parts. First part. In my previous 45 gallon cube tank, even after the tank matured beyond the one year mark where things should get a lot easier, which we'll get a little bit more later, alkalinity swing was still my biggest challenge in this tank. I would see corals looking off, I would do an alkalinity test with my trusty Hannah checker, and oftentimes it would come back way out of whack. And there were indicator corals for me, like the Space Invader Pectinia that is a crowd favorite. Whenever it shows skeleton at the tips, that's usually my go-to for elk swings indicator. And also if my Mandipora cap looks a little bit pale, that usually indicates low nutrient in my tank. But I digress. Being spoiled by an auto tester now, I noticed the following trend a few times in my system. Sometimes the corals in my tank would suddenly stop uptaking the alkalinity. It could be due to some sort of disturbance, sometimes it was never even clear to the reason. But regardless, my doser would not know this and would continue dosing calc wassers or two parts in the past. So in terms of consumption, my 145 gallon system consumes about 1.2 dkh per day. So imagine when the consumption stops suddenly and the doser just kept going. So these days I would catch those sudden stop and uptakes and address them the same day thanks to the auto tester. But in the past, I did not test enough to spot the stop and the uptake quickly, which usually results in the alkalinity to go way out of whack, and then the subsequent swings, and also when I make corrections and when the consumption picks back up. There's a lot of little swings that follow that one big swing, and it causes a lot of stress for the corals. If I were to do it all over again, and I have a decent amount of SPS and LPS in my system, I would totally test my alkalinity every two to three days in the minimum, if not every single day, and I'll do it at the same time of the day in order to spot the potential swings. The exception would be if I keep a really low stock tank where the alkalinity would not get consumed quickly, and thus I do not need to dose as much, or if it's a nano tank that would rely on water change to reset and replenish the element. So beyond those, I would probably step up my alkalinity test way more. So that is the first thing I would tell the old Moki in terms of helping SPS survive in my system. All right, so me and old Moki talked about SPS survival in my system. Next, let's talk about growth. I know pH has been a hot topic recently, and I'm going to throw my head into the ring as well. In the past, I struggled to keep my tank at around 7.9 pH, and I would pop a champagne if the tank ever touched the 8.1 ceiling. Ever since I switched completely to Keltwasser and also running the recirculating CO2 scrubber, there has been a noticeable difference in coral's vitality in growth and uptake, and that translates into even higher pH. Let me explain. So with my current system, I am dosing calc washer as my alkalinity and calcium supplements. I used to use two parts or one of those all-in-one dosing options. But the benefits of using fully saturated calc washer is that it has a high pH value, which has the added benefits of also boosting the pH of the tank while helping with the alkalinity and calcium, which is its main function. I did not really internalize this benefits in the past, so I did not use calc washer as a primary means of maintaining the alkalinity and calcium in the 45 gallon cube tank. And knowing what I know now, I would have gone full calc washer until it outpaced my system's evaporation rate, and then supplement with other options once it outpaced the evaporation rate. The bonus? As the pH increases, corals will grow and demand more alkalinity and calcium, so I would need to dose even more calc washer, which in turn brings the tank's pH up even higher. So that is the winning spiral. At the moment, I'm dosing about 3,000 millimeters of calc washer in my 135 gallon system, and the tank sits at around a pH of 8.4. So besides calc washer, I also have a recirculating CO2 scrubber hooked up to the 145 gallon tank. It's a kind of icing on the cake for me to bring my pH to the 8.4 range. I'm like shooting for the sky here. And it's probably not needed, but I'm chasing that high pH. And before I dive in, I know the common recommendation is to draw outside air into the skimmer. Do it the natural way, right? And I wish I could. But Emily, who is sitting behind me right now, would straight up murder me 
if I drill through the wall, <laughs> there we go. So in the interest of self-preservation, I went the CO2 scrubber route. In the beginning, I tried the non-recirculating method, but the CO2 scrubbing media only lasts for about a week and a half, so it's not really sustainable for me. And later on, I tried the DIY recirculating setup without too much success, until finally I went with a Fish of Hex 3D printed unit with a DIY moisture trap, and the CO2 scrubbing media lasted for about six weeks, and I enjoyed fantastic pH. Now with that said though, there has been talks about how recirculating CO2 scrubber is not really good because it is not bringing in fresh air. In my particular case, I am about half a year in and I have not noticed any negative side effect yet. I'll keep my eyes open just in case. Please do let the present monkey know in the comments below if you know of any drawbacks of recirculating CO2 scrubbing. We can go a little bit deeper on my recirculating CO2 scrubber uh, setup if there's interest, but one final note here, if you do want something like this, please have a flow switch in the skimmer cup so the skimmer shuts off before it overflows because that would be disastrous. And this wraps up point number two. And now we're gonna go into point number three. Okay, so we touched on SPS coral survival and growth. And the last thing I want to touch on is this coloration. Now, I don't feel super comfortable sharing my experience even with my past self because I'm just peeking my head into this door. So, Moki in the past, please do your own due diligence. But trust me when I say to buy Bitcoin and diamond hand it. On most of my tanks, I never had an issue with lighting or flow in terms of equipment. Most of them these days are more than sufficient right out of the box. The issue was that I was messing with them too much, especially the light. I should have just set the light up to where I want them and then just leave them alone. And to not adjust the light or flow in favor of that brand new corals, instead of making the rest of the tank acclimate to the new light and flow settings in favor of that new corals, consider finding a place that's appropriate for that new corals in the environment. Maybe slowly acclimate that new coral towards that final spot using a frag rack. Thinking back now, it was clear that I wasn't being patient enough. These days, even with a system that has all the balanced trace elements and nutrients, I still notice that new SPS frags that enter my system will first turn dull within the first two weeks or so, and it will be completely static for about two to three months until suddenly it started picking up a nice bright coloration, kind of like when it first got into the tank, and then it begins to encrusting on the base and then start shooting out coral lights and growing almost exponentially. It may be that my current system's parameters are still not quite optimal for SPS. I'm guessing maybe like high nutrient, but I do feel that SPS frags do need some time to acclimate to the new environment. So past Moki, please be patient with them and try to keep things stable. Instead of trying to tweak the light setting, thinking that the frags may have thawed out due to not having enough power or a certain spectrum, most likely the frags just need a little time to settle in. Speaking of nutrients, my nutrients is supposedly a little high for SPS. These days, I'm happy with my phosphate under 0.1 ppm and nitrate under 20 ppm. So as long as I'm around or under those levels and not zero, I'm good. And later on, I may aim for even lower nutrient, kind of like 0.05 phosphate and 5 to 10 nitrate. That's kind of like my dream zone for SPS tank, but I'm not stressing over it at all. The last bit to help my SPS corals of color is trace elements. And this, my friend, is the deep hole. And currently I'm implementing the Reef Moonshiners method. And there are quite a few different programs for replenishing trace elements out there. I'm a little hesitant to introduce this to you, past Moki, because it is not cheap ordering the ICP test semi regularly and then all the uh, individual elements. But the results were pretty immediate in my system. The SPS were mostly dull or brown early last year, and some of them had been that way for almost a year, so it was not acclimating issues. After just one single month of trace elements adjustments and daily dosing, I saw pretty drastic color improvement. I cannot tell you which of the missing elements brought the color back, or if they all play a part, but the results spoke for themselves in my system, so I kept going until now, and I have been doing trace elements since March of 2021. So almost a year at this point. With that said though, I feel that each system is different. Maybe your current system already have most of the elements needed and dosing trace element may not make as big of a difference as in my system. So this part of the journey, you would have to experiment alone. But again, 
tread carefully as this is a deep rabbit hole and may get a little costly and also maybe labor intensive as well. Trace elements is an area that I'm just starting to learn more about through hands-on. I'll be happy to share more information with you in the future or bring expert on board to share more. To me, dosing trace elements is a nice to have and not so much a must have like some of the previous things that I mentioned. For example, more frequent testing of alkalinity, keeping pH up with calcwassers, and not messing with the light. So don't stress over dosing trace elements unless you feel like going for the gold. And if you end up doing it, you'll most likely be rewarded, but there is a diminishing return of investment somewhere along the curve, and you'll have to decide where you want to sit on that curve. And there you have it. If I have the opportunity to talk to my past self about keeping SPS corals, those will be the three main points that I would have loved to share. Does any of these points hit close to home for you? What SPS coral advice would you give your past self? I would love to hear about it and learn as well. And oh no, guys, I think I am turning into a stickhead. Oh, 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 oh.